Does prednisone raise your blood sugar? Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. And this is an important question for people prescribed prednisone because it's not talked about often enough and it definitely happens. Prednisone does raise blood sugars. What's important to know about this is that prednisone causing raised blood sugars can lead to lots of complications like diabetes. So what in the world is prednisone? Anyway, prednisone is actually part of a class of drugs called a glucocorticoid. This giant textbook right here that I used from pharmacy school, it says that originally these drugs that prednisone's a part of, glucocorticoids, were named gluco corticoids because of the glucose effect that they had on your body. Prednisone causes increased blood sugar or glucose. Sugar equals glucose. And that's where it got its class name, glucocorticoid. So that's a fun historical fact. Why do, does it do that? Why does prednisone increase blood sugar? And what can we do about it? At the end, I'm going to share five or more tips of how you can modify your blood sugar while on prednisone based on evidence and science. So prednisone is mimicking a hormone in our body called cortisol. And cortisol is designed by mother nature to keep us alive in stressful situations that can be life-threatening. Things like famine, war, and other really high stress situations, cortisol is given to us by mother nature to keep us alive. And so if we have been eating regularly until the famine hits, we've been building up fat and protein and sugar in our body. And during that emergency stressful situation, mother nature tells our body to steal it and release it into the blood so that we have something to use. So if that saber toothed tiger is chasing us, we have the energy to run away and stay safe. But that doesn't work when we're taking prednisone to save our lives from a disease and not from a famine because we're still eating enough. And so we're having high blood sugars without using up the sugar. And that's where the disconnect and the problem comes in. If you're wondering, does prednisone raise your blood sugar? Yes. How much does prednisone raise blood sugar? That's individualized. The studies have shown that of people who are given prednisone or other steroids, corticosteroids or glucocorticoids, up to one third, one out of three get hyperglycemia. That means high blood sugar. And one out of five or 18.2%, nearly one out of five, get glucocorticoid induced diabetes. So there's like full-blown diabetes that has nothing to do with prednisone. And then there's diabetes caused by taking prednisone. One out of five people taking prednisone can get that. And does it go away when you stop taking prednisone? So of those people who get diabetes while taking prednisone, up to a third may continue to have diabetes after stopping prednisone. So it is possible prednisone can give you diabetes. And then the changes caused by having high blood sugar for that amount of time you're on prednisone can cause other complications. So it said 50% of people who take prednisone long-term, and that means more than three weeks, can develop metabolic syndrome. That's a combination of high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. And all of those lead to heart disease and those are some of the top side effects of prednisone. So it's unfortunate that all of these complications can happen because you're taking a disease that can save your life. I had to take prednisone to save my life. And boy, was I stunned when an otherwise healthy young woman, I had high blood sugar while I was taking prednisone. Check out my lab results. Just this huge spike. I had taken the sugar tests when I was pregnant with my babies before I took prednisone and I had never reached high levels that I'd been safe that whole time. I'd had steady blood sugars. And then taking prednisone had caused high blood sugar for me. I didn't have full blown diabetes, but even a young, healthy person eating an otherwise healthy diet had high blood sugar, but I didn't know some of the things that I know now.
I wish I'd known these things I'm about to share with you. So what can you do about the fact that you're taking this drug to save your life, but now it's giving you high blood sugars that lead to diabetes and weight gain and heart disease? Well, first of all, you can eat a diet that supports being on prednisone. That means low in sugar. You don't want any refined added sugar in your diet. You only want naturally occurring sugars in things like fruits and vegetables and grains. Eating good protein is essential to balance out the sugar and fat. Good balance of sugar, fat, and protein is essential. And so you don't want to have too much carbohydrates in your diet. You want it balanced and lean more towards proteins and fats to fill you up and avoid refined sugars. Then engage in a regular exercise, whatever you're able to do according to your doctor. I was told by my doctor I wasn't allowed to ride my bike because I had a bleeding disorder causing my reason for taking prednisone. And so she didn't want me to like die in a bike accident. So for most people, most exercise is safe while in prednisone, but in certain situations like mine, you have to be more careful. And so definitely talk to your doctor about what is safe for you and do as much as you can because mother nature is releasing all this sugar into your body because she thinks she need, you need to be running away. I'm not saying go running while on prednisone. I'm saying you need to use up all of the sugar floating around in your body somehow. Otherwise it leads to complications, right? Okay. The third thing you can do is if you weren't previously on a medication, you may need a medication while on prednisone to support you um, with your blood sugars. One that has shown to be really great is metformin. Mm -hmm. It even helps reduce moon face, but it does require a prescription. If you do have diabetes, you may need an insulin dose change or change in your other prescription medications for blood sugar. Number four is stress management. So taking prednisone is like I told you, cortisol is our stress hormone. It helps us cope with stress. And so if you can do whatever you can in your life to decrease stress, that should help support a healthy blood sugar. And number five, and this is the most important to me, is that way back in 1999, somebody discovered something about prednisone. And I don't think the message got across to the people who needed to hear it. And what Ravina and Silak and other researchers found in 1999 is that Prednisone is causing the high blood sugar because it's causing nutrient depletion. Prednisone is causing our bodies to pee out chromium, a vital mineral that our bodies use with insulin and blood sugar to make the complex needed to use the insulin properly. And if we don't have enough chromium, we don't have the insulin working properly, which means we have a high blood sugar. And so these researchers found, they, they tested people two days before and then three days after they first started taking a steroid like prednisone. And they tested their blood and they tested their urine. And they found that they were peeing out chromium much more than they otherwise were before. They went from a normal level of chromium excretion is what it's called, getting rid of chromium, to nearly doubling the amount of chromium that was in their urine. And that makes it really hard to have a healthy blood sugar and a healthy weight, right? So then they replenished the chromium. They gave chromium supplementation in the form of chromium picolinate. And the title of their article is a reversal of corticosteroid induced diabetes mellitus with the supplemental chromium. They were able to reverse diabetes by giving back what prednisone is stealing. This has been around for almost 25 years, and yet I've never heard of a doctor offering chromium picolinate, not once to any of their patients, even though it can reverse one of the main debilitating side effects of prednisone. So in this article, they found that when they gave chromium picolinate, it took their blood glucose levels from an average of 250 milligrams per deciliter. That's very high down to 150 milligrams per deciliter. That's almost normal just because they were giving back what prednisone was stealing. Pretty stunning. And so their conclusion is these data demonstrate that corticosteroid treatment, prednisone treatment 
increases chromium losses and that steroid induced diabetes can be reversed by chromium supplementation. They went on, and that was with 13 people. They went on and did another study with 50 people and they supplemented 200 micrograms of chromium picolinate. And it said within a week of supplemental chromium, their blood glucose levels in 47 out of 50 patients with uncontrolled steroid induced diabetes decreased from 250 down to 150. In 47 out of 50 people, it decreased that much. Wow. And added bonus, and their oral hypoglycemic medications, that means their pills they were taking for diabetes and or insulin were reduced one half. Half of their diabetes medications were reduced when they initiated chromium supplementation. These data demonstrate that chromium may be beneficial in the control of steroid-induced diabetes. What an understatement. So if you've been struggling with blood sugar issues while on prednisone, chromium picolinate has been proven to help reverse it. Wow. And guess what? That's not the only thing that can help. There's also herbs that can help. Berberine, which has been called nature's ozempic weight loss drug, and cassia cinnamon have both been shown to support healthy blood sugars while on prednisone. All of these are important to be taking while you're on prednisone so that you don't get high blood sugar, diabetes, and heart disease. But nobody's telling you. They're keeping this a secret because they probably don't even know themselves. So when I found out about this, after I had personally stopped taking prednisone and had gained weight and had gotten this big round moon face and was miserable and had high blood sugar, I realized that if we give back the nutrients depleted, and I knew for sure about calcium and vitamin D, I'd learned about that one in pharmacy school, but I didn't know the level of nutrient depletion of chromium itself till later, till it was too late for me. So because I have an autoimmune disease that could come back at any time, I wanted to create a solution that would support me whenever it came back and I had to take prednisone again. So what I did is I invented Neutronized Zone, the first and only supplement for people on prednisone. And guess what it has in it? Chromium picolinate, 200 micrograms in each of these bottles. You take two in the morning with your breakfast and two at bedtime, and it's gonna support your blood sugar while on prednisone. I can't say it's going to reverse your diabetes, but that's what that study had shown when people were given the exact ingredient that's in here. Not only do I have chromium picolinate in here, but I also have berberine and cassia bark and vitamin C, which is vital to have the proper blood sugar metabolism. If you don't have vitamin C enough, then it's really hard for your body to have proper blood sugar. So you take this and you can get it at Nutrinize.com, N-U-T-R-A-N-I-Z-E.com. And it will support you while you're on prednisone. It'll support your blood sugar. It'll support your bones. It'll support your moods. I designed it to be the one and only thing you need to take while you're on prednisone. So you take the morning bottle with your prednisone dose and your bedtime bottle to help you sleep at night. And you just two in the morning and two at bedtime and it supports you in the needs of people on prednisone. Go to Neutronize.com and I'm signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.